this is a 2006 Honda Pilot all-wheel drive it has a V6 in it it has a problem with locking up when it goes in reverse on a level grade it'll move backwards about six feet and then lock up most times you get six feet sometimes you only get a couple feet if you got the nose pointing downhill it it won't back up at all most of the time and sometimes if you get a run at it, it, it might last a little longer, but I don't know if a bolt's sheared off on the reverse fork or what, but customer has bought a used transmission for it. This is the second one. The other one had a cracked case on the bottom of it. You gotta look for that stuff when you buy it. This one's not supposed to be leaking fluid, but it is wet on the front of it. A wet place is a good place to start checking for cracks in the case. I think the drain bolt's just loose on this one, so I don't guess it's going to be an issue. Looks like it's been sitting outside for a while. Some of the lower bolts threads are going to have to be chased, and probably some of the torque converter bolts are rusty in there. And first thing I want to do is take the old harness plug-ins and unbolt it off of it. The wires cut off from the junkyard. And unclip the cable and I'm gonna un unbolt it here at these 10 millimeters. And unplug the neutral safety switch and get that harness. Take the ground off. Clean that up some. And take the old transmission lines off. What's left of them. Pull the dirt. It has 300,000 miles on it. So it's done its thing, I guess. If getting lost around multiple harnesses, this is one to do it on. It's sure got a bunch of wires on it. Hey, you might take a picture of it. And make sure where everything goes. Nice. I took a tap and went around all the torque converter holes and cleaned the rest out of most of it. Most of the hole left a little bit. The original, Not just a couple of threads in the back. And I'm taking a drill brush and going around the face of the bell housing and around the dowel pins. Uh, it's just going to be better to look like this as opposed to that. And I'm going around a torque converter with a wire drill brush. It'll be a better surface for these bolts to hold on to instead of that. And on the starter face, this will look better than white gristle. It's taking a little while, but I'm getting it done. Feel free to drain the transmission fluid out at any time. Right in the center of the bottom of the transmission is a square headed bolt for a ratchet or extension to stick into, and the fluid will drain out there. And set the steering wheel to straight ahead position. And take a bungee cord or something and fasten it underneath the seat so it stays forward. And now things are going to start getting a little worse. I'm going to slip underneath and take this front plastic rock deflector off. It's got three. Three is a clips in the front holding it down and three on each corner goes up into the inner fender area. It 
and sucking. Get some of the stuff in the front below the transmission. I just stuck a pair of diagonals underneath the head of these. They're pretty tough. You take a beating to get them out of there. If the head breaks off one of them or something, just take a Phillips screwdriver and push a pin on through and it'll come out. That's nice. Sure got a bunch of buttons holding it on. And let's see, I've got it raised up just a little bit for now. And you can either start grabbing some of the stuff and unplugging it while you're down here. Or take a picture of the way everything is routed, whatever you need. Before I let it down, start taking all the top stuff off. Corner stiffeners, brackets, frame mount. That's going to be nice. Probably through that hole in that box, probably spray those frame bolts down with some penetrating oil. shield falling off. I got most of the plug-ins undone down here. This this gray one I took 10 millimeter out of the side of the transmission that holds the wire harness in place on the bottom. And then it's got two of them hooked together and one the sensor on the very bottom of the transmission. And I just run a screwdriver down the back of it and blew it open to get it off of this little angle bracket. This sensor stays with the transmission and the used one comes with one and it's still salvageable if needed but and I don't know I've got a lot of stuff loose down here and I'll just take and lift this clip up on the transmission range sensor arm for setting the gears. Raise that clip up. And while you're under here, take the 10 millimeter out of that ground cable. The superficial work is done underneath of here. And I'm going to let it back down. And go on top. Start taking the air cleaner tube off and take the battery out and the battery tray out. Start working on harness bolts all along the side of the transmission and the starter. Got a little gap opened up in it now with the air cleaner tube and battery box liner and battery out of the way. That's really a contraption there to get the air tube off of that vent preheater. And go ahead and unbolt the battery tray. Moving on, I took the three 12 millimeter bolts out of the battery tray and take the whatever size nut is on this starter, it looks like a 13 millimeter, and take a positive battery cable off of it. And it's also hooked on with a support bracket down there, and that'll have to be unclipped or unbolted, whichever offers the easiest path. Now the battery cable, the other battery cable is free. This will be a little easier to deal with now. Or it's coming out of there. And take care of whatever action is necessary to get this metal bracket out of the way. Getting a little bigger hole done in there. I'm going to finish unplugging. Whatever wire harnesses I get to up here and un 
bolt the 10 millimeters out of it and getting the part cable off taking the two 10 millimeter bolts out of the transmission holding the back of it down that's whatever it's got Clipping some of the grounds and this harness hold downs. And plug in the solenoids. It's moving right along. This is the old harness. You can see one of the 10 millimeter bolts that's holding the harness down is right under that Y. Right where the ratchet's onto it. And I removed that one from the stand underneath the big part just below the fill plug. So I can get that one on that sensor unplugged underneath of it. And the perk cables out of the way and propped up. And unplug any other wires on the starter. Remove the starter at any time. It's got a couple of 14 millimeters in it. And don't forget the gasket, they call it. It's a shim. We'll take a uh, hammer and beat these dowel pin holes back down so that gasket will stay stay fixed on there and not fall off and trying to stick it back on. Once you get the two bolts out the starter's a little sticky in there because the dowel pins are in the holes. Just lift up on the back of it with pry bar a little bit, screwdriver or something, it'll break loose. Just then split these hoses apart and pull it through there. get a pretty good hole. These ground straps need to come out of that thermostat housing without breaking the bolt off, so I'm just leaving them in there. Let's prop the harness up out of the way. Moving right along. I'll probably transfer that ground bracket too to the other one. While I'm up here working on the top area. Went ahead and took this O2 sensor bracket off and unplugged the lower O2 sensor. That would actually be a place to hang the motor by if I was using the motor hanger for this. And I'm going to go ahead and zap that lower mount nut off. And the two upper transmission mounting bolts to the bell to the bell housing. One uh, to the right of the thermostat housing. It's in there. And then the other one blow the EGR valve and blow the one of the water radiator hoses. Tight fit.
called up. My business up here is about done. Went ahead and loosened the upper 14 millimeter bolt on the front mount. Of course, it's actually bolted to the engine. It's got a leg that bolts to the transmission directly behind the front lower mount cushion. And I just want that bracket just hanging loosely. And I'm going to go over here to the power steering high pressure line and at least take the clamp loose on the valve pin cover. Securing it. Get some flexibility out of the hose. May have to end up removing the two bolts holding the pipe down to the pump. As well, I used a prop rod over on the passenger side to hold the hood up, plus a backup piece. Because I'm not really going to be working on this side. and. I, Prop rod props on the driver top of the transmission gets right in your way on the driver's side, so I just stuck a, an elbow shaped piece of rod into a hole there with a bolt screw head on it into a, just a hole and prop it against the hood. And if it would jump out or something, this piece of wood holding it, backing it up. I don't want to be hitting the head or losing fingers in the hood. I believe all the top side works done for now. I'll go inside, take the plastic off the lower end. steering column stub shaft, pull one clamp off, and here's a warning about the airbag getting damaged. If you misalign the steering wheel, the wheels are pointed ahead, the steering wheel is pointed ahead. I'll be hooking a, a bungee cord from the bottom of the steering wheel to something on the bottom of the seat to make sure it stays forward. And get this other clamp popped off. And get this plastic tube off of there. And then there's three pins holding it to the floor. One of them's kind of underneath the carpet there a little bit. Let me get a hold of it. Got the three push pins out. They just, we just unthreaded a few turns. They're not very long. One's down underneath the gas pedal under the carpet. Get this upper clamp loose, or out of there anyway. Pull the plastic split in half. Let's pull it down out of there. It's pretty soft. Just open the top up and pull it down. And it's underneath. I have to pull the carpet back a little bit. Lift it up out of there. Not sure why that had to be so difficult, but it was definitely interesting. Okay, I want to focus on pinch bolt down on the bottom. Well, I'm going to take it loose, but not remove it yet. The steering wheel is pointed straight ahead, and I've put a clear paint mark from the steering intermediate shaft joint to the Rack and pinion stub shaft. And that mark will be needed to verify that these two pieces are directly in line when it's reassembled. The 
say the steering wheel is pointing straight ahead. Put a bungee cord. The steering wheel cannot be moved when these two pieces are separated. And the rack should stay straight ahead as much as possible. It'll definitely have to be checked that it's pointed straight ahead before it's reassembled up into here. Because if, if you get the rack off separate from the steering wheel, the clock spring inside the steering wheel it runs the controls off the steering wheel through the airbag and stereo and cruise and whatever will get broken and that'll that'll cost a buck or two to replace that. As long as the wheels are pointed straight ahead for removal and reassembly, it shouldn't cause any problem. Forget about that and clock spring will get broke inside of this steering column and it'll have to be replaced for the airbag and the horn and everything to work again. Now that I've got the paint mark, I'm going to take that 10 millimeter bolt loose and just leave the wheel straight ahead. The wheels are pointed straight ahead. Mouse over the video and hit the circle I to continue to part two of the video.